In this video, we're going to talk about the profit margins that you can expect when you're running an Indian e-commerce or D2C brand or business. Now, before we actually get to the average figures, it's very important for you to understand that what factors, do, what factors will your, uh, your average profit margin depend on. So the very first factor that your average profit margin will depend on is going to be the kind of products that you're selling. Now, the gross margin on different products are, are, are going to be different. Like I'm going to give you some examples. Let's say that you want to sell a pen, you know, maybe you would be able to get this pen made for 10 rupees and you can sell it for like 40 rupees. So that's a 75% gross margin because if you sell it for 40 and you're getting it for 10, let's say, so you, there's a 30%, there's a 30 rupee profit here. So your gross, not exactly profit, but your gross margin here is 30 rupees, which is 75% of the sales value. But let's say that you want to sell uh, a t-shirt. So maybe the cost to get this t-shirt made is uh, 500 rupees and you're selling it for 1000 rupees. So in this case, the gross margin is 50% because you're making 50% is going to be your profit, you know, after you actually pay off the product cost. So your profit margin depends a lot on the kind of products you sell. Some products can have really high gross margins, uh, some products can have low gross margins, but that's definitely a factor that uh, plays a major role. Another factor that's very important when it comes to uh, your average profit margins is going to be what scale are you at in your business? Like a lot of times when you're going to be getting started, your margins are going to be usually, they're going to be high. And then when you start scaling, uh, you know, you're going to be by scaling. I mean, when you invest more money to acquire customers, when you spend more money in your marketing, in your ads, your cost to acquire a customer will increase. That's how, that's how marketing and that's how advertising works. So your cost to acquire a customer will increase when that, but, but your, all of the costs are going to be the same. Right? Like your product cost is not going to change, let's say, or your operational cost and all of that is not going to change. Maybe that's going to increase as well or whatever. So as you scale, your volume increases, but your profit margin reduces. That doesn't mean that you make lesser profit. You make more profit because now you're, you know, you're actually selling more. I'm going to give you a very simple and quick example. Let's say I sell one piece and, um, you know, I'm making a 50% margin on this one. Okay. But now let's say I'm selling 10 pieces and I'm paying more to acquire a customer and I'm just making a 25% margin, but I'm making lesser profit, but I'm selling 10 pieces, right? So the, the total amount of the total amount of money that I make when I'm selling one pen at 50% is going to be, let's say, uh, you know, 20, but when I'm selling, uh, you know, 10 pens, I'm going to be making hundred rupees just to give you an example. So this way, the amount of money that you make when you're scaling, will increase but your average profit margin will go down because your cost will increase and uh, your cost increases usually when you're you know paying more to acquire a customer or your operation cost going higher when it comes to businesses there are different seasons that happen you know when you're especially running an e-commerce business like if you talk about running an international brand all right so uh, the last quarter of the year you know which is october november december these months are like uh, you know they're the usually the best months for businesses not just uh, in us and abroad even in india because a lot of festivals come up and people buy a lot of products you know they buy a lot of gifts they spend a lot of money in buying stuff on the internet so uh, the demand really increases uh, and the competition also increases so usually what we've seen is that some brands they their profit margins increase during this time and for some brands it reduces because it they have to pay more to acquire a customer because of the high competition and then we've seen that months like january and february could be you know could get, get them better profit margins because uh, the competition reduces after that some somewhat uh, like that and then there are different so this entire cycle it it runs like a sinusoidal wave sometimes you know uh, the cost to acquire a customer is going to be high sometimes it's going to be low it's but it's never going to be fixed never going to be fixed it's going to go up it's going to come down so it also depends on the time frame it also depends on the month or the event which is happening around like if you're selling um, you know a product which is for husbands and wives and boyfriends and girlfriends let's say uh, in september versus if you sell these kind of products somewhere around valentine's day so of course you know you're you're, you're going to be it's going to be way easier for you to get sales during valentine's day so that's how events also play a major role when it comes to the profit margins. Now I shared with you that when you scale your, your volume, so when you scale, you're spending more to acquire a customer, which is fine. But in some cases, when you scale, what you can also do is when you scale and you buy products in bulk from your supplier or when you, when they're drop shipping or whatever, whatever model you work with them, when they're shipping products for you in bulk, you can actually ask them to reduce the prices because when you actually make bulk purchases or give bulk orders, 
it takes a supply lesser amount of money to manufacture it or source it. So you can also ask them to reduce the cost. And this is a great way to maintain your margins even when you're scaling. Uh, you know, so this way you would be able to maintain your margins and your, your PNL is not really gonna be affected. Your net profit margins will also depend on the repeat customer rate that you have. Now understand it. Let's say if I continue selling this pen and I continue spending money to acquire 100 customers or whatever amount of customers every month, and that is the only way I make money. So in this case, maybe the overall margin that my business is making is let's say 10%. But what if out of these 100 customers that I'm acquiring every month, 10 customers or 20 customers are coming back over and over again every month and buying uh, you know some other pens from me again and again. When this happens, I'm not gonna be, so when this happens, I'm not really paying to acquire those customers again, right? Because they're my existing customers and I'm getting them back on my brand through email marketing, SMS marketing, WhatsApp marketing, uh, running remarketing ads, whatever. So I'm not really paying the same amount of money that I paid when I, when I really had to acquire them. Uh, either I'm paying no money at all or I'm paying very less amount of money to get them back and buy from me. When this happens, the average profit margin also increases. Right? So when you have high repeat customers, that's a, you know, your average, you'll see your average profit, uh, profit margin also going high. A similar thing applies when it comes to the average order value. Like if someone comes on my store and they just buy this pen and let's say it, it gives me a 25% margin. What if uh, I show them an upsell? What if I show them a complimentary product like a piece of paper or a diary uh, that they can buy along with the pen? In that case, I am not really paying anything extra to acquire this customer now because he's already bought this pen and once he's bought this for me on the checkout page or after they've actually made the payment, I show them a diary and they also end up buying that. When that happens, the, the order value incre increases, the amount of profit I made on that order increases and the amount of money that I paid to acquire this customer remains the same. So in this case, your profit margin also goes up. So these are a few factors uh, that your overall profit margin depends on. But um, seeing across different industries, the average profit margins with any e-commerce, any scalable e-commerce D2C brand is close to 15 to 20%. Like that, that's the average number that we've seen. Some brands that do really, really massive volume can have margins lesser than 10%, uh, you know, but they're making massive volume. So the amount of money they make is also, uh, I mean, what, what I'm trying to say is low margins doesn't mean less money because the overall amount of money they make is gonna be huge. Like brands like Amazon, uh, you know, the last time I was going through Amazon's uh, report, I think their profit margin was close to five, 6%, if I'm not wrong. But the margin seems very low, but then they have the biggest volume in e-commerce in the world, right? Uh, but then, uh, or, or maybe you could have uh, some other brands that have margins like 30 or 35%, uh, but their volume is gonna be lower. So in the end, they made less money. So, you know, the, this figure is different for different, different, uh, different brands, depending on all of these factors that I shared with you. It also depends on industries, uh, if I forgot to mention that, because, uh, you know, like, let's say ma margins in regular fashion are gonna be lesser than luxury fashion. You know, luxury fashion has, has more money, has, has more, not more money, every market has money, but it has more margins there. But then there are costs, there are other costs that you have to take care of by the branding and customer service and all of that. But the average is still going to be around 15 to 20%. Now, if you're someone who wants us to help you, uh, you know, start, grow and scale your e-commerce brand, uh, make it profitable, or maybe if you're running an existing e-commerce brand and you want our help in increasing your profit margins, I have something really special for you. So there's a masterclass that I recorded, which shares the five secrets to build a profitable and successful D2C e-commerce brand. Uh, you can find the link below this video. So just go ahead and have a look at the masterclass and learn, you know, what these five building blocks and these five secrets actually are. At the end of watching this video, you're going to have an option to book a call with my team. If you book a call, on this call, we'll identify where you're at, what you want to do, where you want to go, and then we'll identify if we can actually help you with your vision or not. If you feel we can help you, we'll talk more about how we can help you or not. If you feel we cannot, we'll be very honest with you and we'll let you know that we can't really help you. But regardless of anything, you're going to go back with a lot of value. So have a look at the masterclass and if it makes sense, book a call with us and we look forward to speaking with you and all the best with building your own D2C e-commerce brand. I'm just, 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 I